I worked with a dietitian and wore a continuous glucose monitor for 14 days, and here's what I learned. So to me, not worth it. My stomach hurts so bad. Before we jump into these results, I just need to emphasize these are my results. And so just because certain stresses, exercises, and foods impact my blood sugars in this way, it doesn't mean you're going to have the same results. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a registered dietitian, and while I did work with a dietitian over the last 14 days with this CGM experiment, and I will be sharing some of the information she gave me, nothing in this video is meant to be taken as medical advice. Okay, let's go. Now our blood sugars are not only impacted by our food choices, but also our sleep routines, workouts, fasting protocols, and stress. And I must admit, when I first had to put this in my arm, even though I have heard other people talk about the process, say that it's very painless, I've seen other people put them in, I was still nervous, my heart was pumping faster, I was sweating, and I really thought that it was going to hurt. I ended up working myself up for nothing because on a scale from zero to 10, 10 being that it's incredibly painful to put in a CGM, it was a zero. So it just goes to show that sometimes we work things up in our minds, stress ourselves out, our blood sugars rise for nothing. Once I put the CGM in my arm, it was the middle of the day and my blood sugars were 94, which is the highest my blood sugars were over the course of two weeks for it being the middle of the day. It's the middle of the day, I usually don't go that high, but because I was so stressed putting it in, then I worked myself up and I went a little bit higher. But with that being said, 94 as a spike is definitely not considered high. After someone eats, we're looking for numbers to be under 140. And then when someone wakes up after having not eaten for eight hours and they're in that fasted state, we're looking for numbers to be under 100. However, if someone has a fasted blood sugar of over 100 one time, or if someone spikes above 140 after eating, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's more the consistency and staying in that elevated state without coming down quickly. That's where it's not considered as optimal. Just to keep things simple, we're looking for numbers in a fasted state under 100, after eating under 140, and while working out under 180, since spikes from exercise do not produce the same insulin response like spikes from food, therefore they do not have a negative response on insulin sensitivity, according to my dietitian. Now my blood sugars when I wake up on average are about 80. I wake up at around 7 a.m., take a morning walk around the neighborhood, get dressed and go to the gym. And I lift weights, this is not a cardio gym sesh. While working out, on average, my blood sugars were about 95. And again, I'm saying my averages because when I'm at the gym, if I'm pushing it more, I'm bringing more intensity, or if I'm doing leg day versus back day, my blood sugars would fluctuate a little bit, but on average, about 95. After I work out, I break my fast with eight ounces of raw milk. I've now increased that number to 12 ounces of raw milk each day, but for the full two weeks, I did eight ounces of raw milk, which is about eight grams of protein, eight grams of fat, and 12 carbs. I drank this glass of milk at around 9.15ish in the morning after I finished working out, which brought my blood sugars to about 100. Even on the days where I didn't work out, my blood sugars still went to about 100 having that glass of raw milk. I'm a pretty routine person and I eat the same lunch every day. I'll eat 15 ounces of 88 12 ground beef with a tablespoon of butter at around 1130-ish, which is about 82 grams of protein and 60 grams of fat. Sometimes I'll add half an avocado, which will bring my fat content up to 75 grams. You know, I don't actually track my macros, so it's not until I'm typing this all out where I realize, wow, I'm eating a lot of protein. I mean, I knew I ate a lot of protein, but I really didn't. You know, sometimes I'm still surprised by how much protein I eat. 
Regardless of if I had an avocado or not with lunch, my blood sugar stayed above 65 and below 90 all the way up until dinner. So on average, my blood sugar spike post lunch is about 85. With dinner, I'll eat more meat. So whether that's salmon, venison, chicken, bison, steak, I'm eating more meat and fat, which really shouldn't spike my blood sugars. And it got to the point where, like I said, I'm a very routine person. I wake up at about the same time. I work out at about the same time. I eat very much almost the same thing every day. So after a few days, my dietitian ended up saying that it looks like my main glucose trends are in optimal range. My meals score a nine to 10 out of 10 for a meal score. And just overall from a blood sugar perspective, I'm very healthy. And so my dietitian suggested that I run some experiments. This is where the fun happens. I ended up taking people's comments, common things that people will say, and putting them to the test. So for example, people leave comments saying that you shouldn't have that much protein in a sitting, otherwise it will spike your blood sugars. And again, we're all different people, so it may spike their blood sugars, but for myself, I ate eight ounces of ground bison, 10 ounces of 88 12 ground beef, a tablespoon of butter, and a carnivore crisp chicken skin, putting me at 109 grams of protein, 79 grams of fat, and zero carbs for that meal. The highest my blood sugars went the whole afternoon was 90, and the highest, I mean, it went to 91 at 9 p.m., but I still don't even believe that that was from lunch. I think that was from my actual dinner. You'll see little gaps in my charts sometimes because user error, I would forget to scan the CGM. At least with NutriSense, you have to scan it within eight hours. But my mother-in-law was in town nine of the 14 days. So we were out busy doing a lot of different things and I got distracted and busy and I sometimes forgot to scan. My bad, sorry guys. And with these experiments as well, I was trying to keep them semi-realistic because even though I usually don't sit down and eat 100 grams of protein in a sitting, I know there are people who do eat one meal in a day and they would be having that 100 grams of protein, but they would always have fat with their meals. Some people asked, why didn't I just do 100 grams of protein with zero grams of fat and essentially just have protein powder? The reason I didn't do this is because I would never eat five scoops of protein powder in one sitting, nor do I know anybody who would do this. I don't even think bodybuilders sit down and just have five scoops of protein powder in one sitting. So to keep the experiment more realistic, I wanted to have the protein with the fat, since if I were to ever have one meal in a day, I guess, I mean, I never do that, but if I ever did, then I would have that protein, but I would always have fat. So it didn't make a ton of sense for me to do an experiment that would be completely un, you know, I would never have five scoops of protein powder in a sitting. And then other experiments I ended up trying out were with fruit. And when I have fruit, again, just trying to keep it realistic, I have it after dinner as dessert. So I do have that meat and fat for dinner and about an hour and a half later, I'll have that piece of fruit. Maybe had I had the piece of fruit for breakfast or as a snack in the middle of the day, it would have impacted my blood sugars differently. But like I said, to keep it realistic, I do have that piece of fruit usually for dessert and I want to see how it actually impacts my blood sugars when having a piece of fruit after dinner. So I experimented with an apple, blueberries, pears, and dark cherries. All these fruits still kept my blood sugars, I mean, lower than me drinking milk, but the highest fruit was a banana that took me up to 110, which is still very low. So I had to take it to a whole nother level and test out having three servings of fruit in one sitting, which I realized I had never done in my life. Even as a kid, I would have never had three servings of fruit in a sitting. I would have remembered because it was painful. I am in such bad colon pain right now. I don't think I've ever eaten three pieces of fruit in one sitting before. And then my stomach hurts so bad. <sighs> 
I feel like I'm constipated. I didn't sleep great that night. I was very hot. My stomach was in pain. I felt like someone was squeezing my colon. It wasn't very fun. I had a serving of blueberries, cherries, and an apple, which ended up spiking my blood sugars to only 94. But with that being said, even though I didn't have a high blood sugar response, that doesn't mean I want to continue eating three pieces of fruit in a sitting because I was in so much pain. Of course, the next day when I have so much sugar, my scalp will break out into more of a dry, flaky, dandruffy, irritated, inflamed scalp. Fruit may not spike my blood sugars that high, but sure spikes my dandruff pretty high. So to me, not worth it. Give me the bacon. Also, having a blood sugar spike isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a very normal and natural process that the body does. It's again, the consistency and staying in that elevated state that could indicate there's a little bit of something going on. But if I ate a food and it spiked my blood sugar, that doesn't necessarily mean that food is a bad food. Similarly, if I were to have foods that did not spike my blood sugars, that doesn't mean that food is a good food. I had the three servings of fruit, which gave me digestive distress, inflamed my scalp and my skin. And so this whole video is purely showing how food impacts blood sugars, not how food impacts other aspects of our body, our gut health, our mental health, our liver, things like that. Anyway, I wanted to purposely try and spike my blood sugar. So I ended up having a tablespoon of honey, which to me, I know some people love honey or coffee or dark chocolate. People love other things that I think are just ugh, yucky. I do like honey if it's mixed in with other foods, mixed in with yogurt or mixed in. I, lo I love the carnivore bar honey bars, but honey by itself, the smell, the taste, ugh. Well, don't eat it all at once either. I can't believe people eat this stuff. Oh. So I had a tablespoon of honey. Again, not because I actually am going to regularly consume honey. I don't like the taste, um, but because I wanted to see if I could spike my blood sugars. The highest I peaked with honey was 108, similar to the banana, but the honey gave me diarrhea the full day. So there's that. The highest my blood sugar spiked over the 14 days was from combining both the raw milk and a banana, putting my blood sugars at a peak of 114. Again, 114 isn't considered high, but in context for me, it was the highest I went. So 114 is considered optimal, but the only true way to know what is your highest or what, how different foods impact your blood sugars is to do the tests yourself. Some people will say that my results would reflect someone who's young. I would argue that it's more that I'm metabolically healthy as to why I had these blood sugar responses because there's people who are older than me, who are healthier than me, and there's people who are a lot younger than me who aren't as healthy. And so I don't think of age as the biggest factor as to why someone would be metabolically healthy. Age does play a role. As our bodies age, we do go through different hormonal responses and changes. We have menopause, and so our bodies do change as we age. But like I said, there are people who are healthier than me, who are older than me. There's people who are less healthy, who are younger. So I would say bigger factors as to why someone would have metabolic health would be due to their diet, their sleep, their exercise, their stress levels. I think it should be a requirement that every human wears a CGM at some point in their life to truly learn about the impacts of food and stress and exercise on our blood sugars. I wish I would have tested out a cold shower or running a mile or doing more stressful activities, but <laughs> yeah, a mile for me is a lot, but I think the world would be a completely different place if people did test out and see their blood sugars at some point in their life. There is a discount code for $50 off a NutriSense glucose monitor in the description. This video is not sponsored by NutriSense. I don't care which CGM people use. I do think that it would benefit so many people to test it out and wear it for themselves and learn about their bodies. I hope you guys got value out of this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I now have to do kind of a detox and I really need to take a break from the fruit for a bit and the sugars because my scalp has been freaking out from all these experiments and whatnot. So I hope you guys have a happy rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.